in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good evening, Ghana. Amen. I want us to take um, a few minutes to pray before I begin to teach. But um, please, while standing, everyone, I'd like you to help me honor. Um, this great man, the father truly in the land, his eminence, and the first lady. Let's honor the archbishop. We honor you, sir. Sincerely so. Is this the best you can do? Give him a big, big God bless you. Thank you for your love, sir, your labor, your sacrifice for the kingdom in this nation, across the continent. We salute what you represent, and the Lord truly honor you in Jesus' name. And in a similar vein, please help me honor every man, woman of God in this place. Those who are in front here, those who are scattered, come on, give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Is it all right if we pray? The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty four. It says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. What things soever ye desire. That means that one of the ways that we receive is to communicate our desires even in the place of prayer. Is someone ready to pray? Please lift your voice in one minute and begin to cry unto the Lord for a definite visitation a definite encounter i see people stretched right to the back and no matter how far you are from the stage and for those who are following by way of television following online let your heart be opened go ahead the bible says the man at the that becomes the proof that you attended that occasion could be some gift pack could be a jota could be an extra meal there is no one who comes to any responsible occasion without a provision for a souvenir. And this is also true when we come to God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and in doing so, he says, Forget not his benefits. There are five of them. Number one, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Number two, who healeth all thy diseases. Number three, who delivereth you from destruction. For honor, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. The final one says, he satisfieth your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed. That means at the end of this meeting, the proof that you came it's not just that you saw the preacher. We must... That even though their hearts were evil, but because they were fathers, they demonstrated fatherhood are in their ease to release are we together and if it is true that god is father it says when you pray say our father not our maker 
not our redeemer, our father. The Hebrew word Abba, the Greek is Patar. Source, sustainer, defender, protector. Are we together? So are you ready to pray in one minute? Ask the Lord to give you a definite encounter. Let it be that I encountered you and let there be proof of my encounter. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. In the kingdom is unto you according to your faith. Do not make the mistake of Jacob. He said the Lord was in this place and I knew not. For in Jesus, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We receive, we manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Will you breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord? Bring upon my life. I receive, I manifest the prayer, His power and His wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. We receive tonight and we manifest his power and his wisdom till the nations and the bible says that the man began to ask arms of them and then peter looked at the man and fastened his eyes toward him and said look on us then the bible says the next verse that the man looked at them expecting to receive the only problem was what he wanted to receive he wanted to receive silver and gold and here was the apostle bringing something more superior and the apostle said i know your desire is connected to silver and gold but when god comes to you he gives you beyond silver and gold watch this what god gives you is the ability to rise up and walk the ability to rise up and walk in God's economy is greater than silver and gold. Because if you have silver and gold and yet your capacity to move, your capacity to make progress is, is limited, you will still be a victim. The Bible lets us know that there was a responsible woman whose problem overshadowed her sense of responsibility until she was named by her calamity called the woman with the issue of blood. She spent all her earnings. She was not careless. She was a responsible woman. But the Bible never said the woman who earned well. Her problems overshadowed every other thing she had achieved. And she was only left with one name. The woman with the issue of blood. Spent all her earnings. She had silver and gold. But what she lacked was the ability to rise up and walk. There are many of you here who perhaps you came tonight to receive silver and gold. But what the spirit is giving you is much more superior. You will get the breakthrough. You will get the healing. You will get the deliverance. But in God's economy, that is just silver and gold. The more superior visitation leaves you with the ability to rise up and walk. The ability to rise up and walk. Please be seated.
Thank you again for this privilege to bring the word of the Lord. I love this beautiful nation of Ghana. I truly do. And it's an honor. Thank you so much. Now, let me please request that we settle down and to lend our destinies rapt attention as I teach. The word of God is very powerful because among the many things that it does is to bring enlightenment. Enlightenment. Beyond information, the word of God brings illumination. It brings enlightenment. And in this kingdom, we only arise and we shine to the degree to which our light comes. Not the degree to which the light is available. The light can be available, but you only arise and shine when it comes amplified says isaiah 6 c and verse 1 arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you then it says rise to a new light in the name of jesus christ so i want you to please pay attention and um i'll be starting my session just visiting this topic from an angle that the lord placed upon my heart it's been my passion, not just um, as defined by my call, but my sincere desire to help people know God, to help people encounter the God of the Bible in truth. Because I am convinced that the missing ingredient, the reason why there is inefficiency in our Christian experience generally as a people is because of the vagueness that is around our knowing who God is. Are we together now? The believer's exploit was, was supposed to be a derivative of the depth of your knowledge of God. And if for any reason you are found wanting in that area, so would be your exploits. This is a conference that seeks to upgrade us in the spirit, not just to give us ideas, but to empower us by light. And may that light reach you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 4 gives us a very interesting story. John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos. And he had many encounters. And he documented some of these encounters as we see in Revelations. Let's look at chapter 4 from verse 1. It is interesting that the Bible says... Among the many things that John was asked to do was to write. To capture this experience so that his writings would mentor the generations to come and help them to have a more superior spiritual understanding as to the way God works. So the Bible says, after this I looked, John is speaking now, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. A door was opened in heaven. And the Bible says, out of that opening came a voice as of a trumpet. And then it began to speak. And what he got to find out, he said, come up hither. Watch this. As soon as that door opened, John was beckoned upon to rise to a higher dimension. He says, come up hither and I will show you. There are things you cannot see from that plane. Now that the door is open, the first admonishment from that voice that he heard was to come up hither. And then he began to see he was given the privilege. We know from this scripture that it was a door that opened him to the throne room. And he beheld the worship that was going on there. When It says that he to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created. When you read the preceding verses, it was a worship that was dedicated to him who sat or sits upon the throne, the father now and to the lamb. Now you notice that when a door was opened to heaven, it ushered John straight into a deeper revelation of Jesus and of the Father. That means in God's economy, when doors are open, you are exposed first in order of spiritual priority. 
When a door opens in the spirit, the first thing you should encounter is not things. The first thing you should encounter is not realms. You should encounter God himself. No wonder Jesus calls himself the door. Are we together now? Our idea of doors is that the moment they open, and I'll talk a bit about that hopefully tomorrow, a door is a system that midwives realms, midwives dimensions, midwives rooms. The rooms in any house are separated by walls and doors. A door is an authorized system for access. I would always give an example that if I found you inside my house and you jump through the fence, you are in my house but you are not welcome. I don't call you a visitor. What do I call you? A thief. Because you are in my house but through an unauthorized access point. So when Jesus says, I am the door, he's saying that there is a possibility that you can route the realm of the spirit through many other avenues but there will be side effects to that i am the authorized pathway are we together now so john says a door is open to me in the spirit and i hear a voice that begins to usher me to come and see something more superior i hope you know that this same john was mentored by jesus when he walked upon the earth and now john is shown another dimension of the glory of god and he learns God in a way that he's not known before. And all that was courtesy and open door. So I want to walk in keeping with this protocol tonight. My emphasis is to help us by the spirit of the living God. To reveal something about God that I believe is missing across the body of Christ. I submit to you sincerely that the average believer saved filled with the holy spirit serving in church they cannot defend their knowledge of god because the average believer does not even know perhaps just subliminally at this life by believing jesus his substitutionary sacrifice so we receive as a reward the life of god but god designed the kingdom system such that the full potential of this life that you have released or you have received only finds expression on the strength of knowledge. Please say knowledge. That means two people can be saved. Perhaps the same day. Perhaps by the same man of God. And yet give them a few years. Their Christian experiences will differ sometimes so apart as the east is from the west. And that the factor responsible for that disparance, that disparity, is not the love of God. Are we together? It's not even time. But they are individual revelations of God in the course of their Christian experience. You are powerful in this kingdom to the degree to which you know God. So the Bible says, but the people that do know, not claim to know, the people that do know indeed, know their God, there are two rewards that they will have for knowing God. Number one is capacity. They shall be strong. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. Many believers are not able to stand the times because they, have, they do not have an enlarged spiritual capacity which is a function of the haziness, the vagueness in their understanding of God. Are we still together? And then number two, it says they shall do exploits. I like that. There are people who say exploits. There are people who write on exploits. But there are people who do exploits. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. There are people who live around the airport with all due respect and yet they've never flown in an aircraft. There are those who walk around the airport. They can lead you, they can show you everywhere from the door until the exit point. And you would think because they've been around the airport for so long means that they would have entered an aircraft. They may have been there, they were born around that neighborhood. And yet around that reality, 
but never had a chance to enter an aircraft. This is how it is with the faith life. There are people who have been around miracles, around powerful conferences and conventions, around anointed men and women of God, around great books, and pass through the waters I will be with you, through the river, not burn you. Um, intellectual, you know, um, achievements and all of that. But the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 9, when you read 23 and 24, it says, let not the wise man, I'm not teaching on that, but this is already powerful because there are three elements. If the glory of God is upon you, it must be revealed through the manifestation of these three elements. One, wisdom. Two, power. Three, wealth. No matter how humble you are, if it is the glory of God that rests upon you, these are the tripartite expressions of glory. But this is not where I'm teaching. It says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man or the powerful man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Next verse says, but let him that glorieth glory in this. Is that in your Bible? That he understandeth and he knoweth me. This is really the glory of the believer. So when we stand tall and confident, it's not just because of cars and houses and intellectual qualifications as important as they are. It's important we bring the body of Christ into this orientation that the believer's pride is not just in the acquisition of things. If we raise a generation that describes God's love for them based on the presence of things, we'll be in trouble. Because in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible talks about men who did not obtain these promises, yet he called them men of faith. But one thing they all got was a good report. Are we together? Yes. So in God's economy, the faith adventure does not always end up with possessing things, but it must end up in having a good report. I'm saying this because there are people passing through things now. You've not seen the manifestation of the word of God yet. If I say, do you have faith? The world will say no, because they only prove the presence of faith by the presence of things. A more superior demonstration of faith, according to Hebrews 11, is the presence of a good report. What is the report? That I have trusted God even though I did not see anything. What is the good report? That I maintain my integrity like Job. The Bible says when all hell broke loose for Job, he bowed himself and worshipped. That is not a promise, but that is a good report. Now, I'm not here to make trouble, but it's important we give ourselves a renewed orientation about the concept of faith. Because there is a generation that is already confused. And they, are, they feel while God is dealing with them, pruning them and building them to become people of stature. When God really loves you, in fact, according to scriptures, fathers demonstrated their love for sons by giving them things that money cannot buy. When God loves a man, he gives you himself. That is his gift. Are we together? Abraham was about to sort his children. And to all the children that came from other women, the Bible says he gave them gifts. But then to Isaac, the Bible records that he gave him everything he had. And yet we do not see anything tangible given to Isaac. The proof of what he had received was shown when there was famine in the line. And Isaac sowed in that land. There was something upon him that was greater than money. By mercy, one opportunity to choose only one thing. And the son laughed. He said, I choose the servant. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> I choose the person who chose everything. That's what happens when God gave us Jesus. In this case, Jesus not being a servant. You see, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Every door or every house has something called the main door or the master door. Am I right on that? Yes. So if you have a house, 10 bedrooms, 20 bedrooms, 3 bedrooms, there usually is a central door that gives you access. And even if other doors are open and the main door is closed, you will still be outside. 
That means the door that opens you inside has more power than all other doors. The door to the kitchen can be open. The door to the living room can be open. Are we together? In fact, even the door to your jewelry, the jewelry box can be open. But if the main door is closed, as far as your experience is concerned, all doors are closed. Are we learning? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are we learning now? Now listen very carefully. God can be known and God wants to be known. Please listen, Ghana. God can be known and God wants to be known. I didn't just believe. I know whom I believe. And the Bible says, I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I submit to you by the authority of scripture, there are things you cannot do except and unless you know God. There are dimensions of your kingdom assignment you will never be able to step into until you know God. Because you see, when God talks to men, he talks to men like he's talking to himself. God can give you an instruction that will stop you from sleeping. Go and build the hospital. God for you. He talks as if you will not need to build it. Because everything you need is con. And Mary sat down and Martha became offended. And said, come on, I expect Jesus to tell this lady to stand up. Let the men sit. But the women can go around and Jesus looked at her and said, Martha, Martha. You are worried and offended about many things. One thing. Say one thing. One more time, say one thing. He said, one thing is needful. And that is what Mary has chosen, to sit at the master's feet. Because when you can sit at his feet, you will find the secret to multiplying bread. When you sit at his feet, you will find the secret for speed. When you sit at his feet, what the presence of Jesus cannot give you is not available. Don't try to look for it. If it is not found in his presence, you cannot find it anywhere. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Thank you, Jesus. Someone will leave this place tonight confident. Someone will leave this place tonight audacious. Now, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. Let's see what we can do within the time that we have. Is God helping someone already? Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Can you read it as loud as you can? Want to go. Hast thou not known, aha, uh -huh, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. This is a very interesting description of the God we want to study. How do you study a God that is everlasting? How do you try to know the God that created all things and was not created himself? How do you try to know a God that does not faint, that is not weary, and there is no searching of his understanding? Now, let me say this. As far as the revelation of God is concerned, there are dimensions of God we can never know and understand. Let me explain to you. Number one, his omnipresence. Are we together now? He is the best of everything in that state. But we keep growing. God does not grow. Jesus only happened to grow when he became a man, but not as God. Are we learning now? This is very important. So God is omnipresent God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. However, in knowing God as far as our earth work is concerned, please listen carefully now. There are three dimensions of him that he desires the saints to know. And this will be my teaching tonight. Three dimensions. These dimensions describe the biblical pathway to knowing God. That if anyone here seeks to know God genuinely, to know God accurately, this is the predefined pathway to knowing God. 
Are you ready? Number one. The first dimension that represents the first way we know God according to scripture is the knowledge of his nature and character. Please write it down. In our attempt to learning God, we must learn his nature and his character. His nature and his character. Exodus 33, 18 and 19. And Moses said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. I don't know what Moses was trying to ask, but he said, show me your glory. And here's what the Bible says. God said, I will make my goodness. Are you seeing that now? Because the goodness of God is an aspect of his glory. The glory of God is a summation of every attribute that makes him God. Now he's revealing his nature called his goodness. You notice that every time God wants to show salvation to men, he releases his goodness and his mercy. Now believers say this every Sunday and yet we do not know the power that is contained there. Surely we say, goodness and mercy shall follow me. And it's clear that we do not even know what it is. When the goodness of God follows a man and his mercy follows a man, it is a remarkable mystery. This was the mystery that turned negative battles. Every time the nation of Israel were surmounted by their enemies and defeat was imminent, they would drop their swords and invoke his goodness and his mercy. And the moment that happens like it was in the days of Jehoshaphat, their enemies began to kill themselves because God released his goodness and his mercy. I'm talking about. So I can help you to know him by describing for you his nature and his character. When you know the nature of God, you will know what God cannot do. And this is one of the secrets to discerning the prophetic. You will be a victim of the abuse of the prophetic if you do not understand the nature and the character of God. So for instance, with all due respect, if you come to me and tell me that God is angry at me and say for instance, I will die tomorrow, I will appreciate you no matter how great you are. And like Hezekiah, I will allow you to go. But you see, there's something about the nature of God that will not allow me to be afraid. The Bible lets us know that the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and he's rich in love. Did you hear that? The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger. God will always give people a chance to decide to love him. He only judges people in the present in receiving that product. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the God of the heavens, as mighty and as powerful as he is, wants us to know him first by discerning his nature. When Jesus came, the first thing he revealed about God was the nature of God, full of grace and truth. Before power, grace and truth. So, I'm describing this gentleman and you come into that office and you begin to look around from the lens of my description of his nature and then you see a fine young gentleman, very cautious, most likely he's the one. And you come to him, are you, what's your name? Hammond. Hammond. Are you Hammond? And he says, yes I am. And you can almost be mistaken for a prophet, but you use the nature of that man. Are we together? Question, if God were to appear in this place now among the crowd, will you be able to identify him? Or will you confuse him with every other person? Do you know his nature enough to know him when you see him? That I know this is God. When you understand his nature, you can know what he has done and you can know what the enemy has done. One of the keys to discernment, Ghana is God helping us. We will keep attributing evil to God because we do not know his nature. There are things the Bible says the enemy has done this. For instance, anywhere you see stealing, 
Anywhere you see killing, anywhere you see destruction, intelligent people fill in the blank. Who would be responsible for that kind of thing? The thief, Satan himself. The Bible says be sober. Then it says be vigilant. The word vigilant there means be discerning. Because your adversary, the devil, that means there is a way Satan also has a nature. You can know he has visited a family. You can know he has visited a business. You can know he has visited a territory. When I know the nature of God, I know what to pray against because I judge the happenings in my life with respect to the nature of the one who has done it. When I see love, when I see mercy, when I see kindness, it cannot be Satan. No. He does not walk that way. There is no nature of love within him. Hallelujah. It can also help you to know what kind of spirit is at work in you. Because when you know the nature of God, you can judge by the nature of God what you are becoming. And then you know what spirit you are submitting to. The moment you claim that you are walking in church and you are becoming more like one who steals, like one who kills, like one who destroys. I don't... So I know that the spirit of God is at work in you because you are manifesting that nature. The zenith of it is love. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what it is that you've lived your life. Don't say I'm somebody who is I'm naturally angry. What then is the advantage of this Zoe life you have received? With time, maybe not immediately, the nature of God should swallow up that nature that has come with your limitations. So if I look at you, haven't worked with God, I shouldn't say you're a Ghanaian, you're a Nigerian, you're a South African. The spirit life has so swallowed up your limitations. When I look at you, the only place I can trace to you is the throne room, his presence. You have been so transformed. You don't look like the limitations of Ghanaians. You don't look like the limitations of Nigerians. You don't look like the limitations of Americans. The reason why it is important to know God is because in the knowledge of God, as we behold him, the part you, be, you behold is the part you are changed into. The nature of God, please listen carefully, and his character. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things God will never do. One, he will never manipulate the will of men. If you know this about God, are we together now? At the, at the detriment of your eternal destiny, he still gives you room to choose. I have died, but you can choose to reject me. It in the body of Christ, the level of antagonism is a testament. Even by your tongue-talking, anointed, miracle-walking, it doesn't matter. The Bible tells us that it is love that gives weight to anything in the spirit. Anything that does not carry love is very small in the spirit. Money without love, very small. Great ministry without love, very small. Tongues without love, very small. Power without love, very small. In order of priority, the weightiest measure of God's nature is his love. Did you hear that? The weightiest description of God's, is not his power, we're coming there, but his nature. So when I look at people, and they tell me, I love Jesus and I know him. I say, all right, you've met him. I begin to search for the manifestation of his nature in their lives. If I find it one thing, I do not condemn. But it should call you back to the school of the spirit. That there is a lot to be done. We have a generation with all due respect of preachers that are rising and do not care about having the nature of God. Because it is not charismatic to have that nature. I'd rather be able to speak in tongues than to love. It looks more fashionable to work miracles than to love. We cheapen love and make it look like it's an attribute for weak people. Do you know that's what defeated Satan on the cross? What power could not do love did? Yes, sir. Please pay attention. Don't tell me you are a preacher. Don't tell me you're a businessman. Don't tell me you, you've gone, you love God. Don't tell me you've been in ministry 10 years. No. Show me the outworkings of the nature of God 
as a testimony that you have met him. When men meet God, the proof that they met him is not the visions they bring back, is that they become like him. When men encounter God, listen, God is helping someone tonight. We need to know the nature of God as the way to discern between error. Are we together? If I prophesy and I prophesy in love, the delivery will be very different from one who prophesies from a standpoint of hate or sentiment. If I preach and I preach, let me tell you this. When you preach to people, no matter how hard the message is, if it is from a standpoint of love, the spirit of that love goes together with that teaching and they can absorb it. You will preach something that is hard and yet they receive it because they know that the goal is not hate. The goal is love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, not for God was so powerful, not for God was so great, not for God was so mighty. God is love. Say it one more time. That means in this revelation that I'm bringing tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if this door has been opened for us, then see it as the door that leads you to cure unforgiveness, to cure bitterness, that everything that is inconsistent with the nature of God, you have an assignment to crucify it this night. I hope you still like what I'm saying. We're still friends. Are we together? Yes. Leave the issue of power and miracles. We're coming there. This one is the inner working of the spirit. This is what produces mighty men. Listen, the Bible says, go and borrow vessel. Can I tell you why the anointing for signs and wonders seems scarce in the church? Because the vessels that want to carry it are small. The space for the power has been covered by jealousy, by envy. There is no space for the anointing to rest again. Don't say tell them. God is speaking to everyone individually. Ghana, you invited me. You invited me and I came. <laughs> Please sit down. Don't be distracted. Can I tell you this? In the realm of the spirit, the weightiness of men is not based on the supposed exploits that we celebrate physically. The day Jesus Christ will come, we are going to be surprised. You will think that the Joshua Selmans are some of the people who will stand closest until you see a woman who has never climbed the pulpit, but she has walked on the spirit and she is a living manifestation of the character and the nature of the Christ. It is true. Give yourself a renewed orientation. Your Christianity is not just measured by your longevity of time in prayer, as important as that is. Or just by the ability to quote scripture. Satan can do all of that except love. Satan quoted scripture. Satan prophesied using a lady with... I'd rather be a preacher who has no revelation, no miracle working power, no influence but if i stand here whether it is through singing or through the simplicity and the frailty of teaching if i end up revealing the nature of god in the realm of the spirit i did a good job are we together I believe that I'm speaking tonight to some man of God who is already being prepared as the next generation of the apostolic, the prophetic voices over Ghana. If all you are looking for is power, you will collide with something that will destroy your destiny later on. Let me tell you, in God's order of building men, his character and his nature precedes his power. 
Did you hear what I said? It took one night for impartation, but it did not take one night for transformation. They stayed with God. There are many people who have a semblance of power, and I'm not downplaying it. But hear me, in order of spiritual priority, your cry and my cry must be, Lord, reveal your nature, reveal your character. Some of you have not read about the fruit of the Spirit in years, but you know every scripture that talks about revelation and prophecy. Go back to your Bible and read it well. God is calling you. You don't know a Christian just by the name that he bears. Joshua, John, Ruth, no. You don't know a Christian just because of tongues. Demons give tongues. There is something about the excellency of the nature of God. One person aside from Jesus who manifested that so beautifully was the man. Beyond being a man of God, beyond being a great preacher to the glory of God, my greatest desire is to be conformed in a greater measure to become the most visible portrait of the Christ that can be captured in a man. This is my greatest project. More than ministry expansion. More than greater revelations. More than a greater name. If you do not know me and you can see Jesus through me, I did ministry well. Don't think I'm just talking because I'm holding the mic and talking to the nations. No, this is my desire. Preacher, God is speaking to you. I salute your revelation. I salute your, your stamina in the many things you are doing. But there is a higher call. The first call that this open door brings is that you must get to a point where you break down again. And like Paul, even Paul, that I may know him. Paul, not just that I may receive from him. We are a receiving generation. Who does not know who we are receiving from? We close our eyes and say, just drop anointing to my hands. It doesn't matter if you are a wizard, you are Jesus, you are, just give me anything that will make me famous. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Can I give you one more? If I stop here tonight, I will still be fulfilled. The problem with the church is not power, even though we are looking for power. The problem with the church is not revelation. There is no time in the history of the church where we have seen levels of spiritual illumination as it is now. All you need to go, do is go on the internet. From Kenya to Nigeria to Ghana to America, dimensions of revelation. But the one thing that is missing, and this is why the world has looked at the average believer as a nuisance to civilization. Because the character of the Christ that compels men to say, this is Jesus in Ghana. There is a desperate need for the restoration of believers. Are we together now? And I know that I've stretched you a bit, but I feel stirred in my spirit to just give us two minutes to cry before God. I don't know what position you are going to assume, but all of us together, no big man, no nothing, we are going to cry and say, Lord, walk upon my heart. That let there be a circumcision within me. Cast your golden crowns. Don't tell me how many people you prophesy to. I respect the prophetic, but take up that golden crown. Throw it on the ground and cry before the Lord. In the next two minutes, cry before your maker. Lord, I need to become like you in truth. There is a bankruptcy of the awareness of your nature and character. Go ahead. Give us Galatians 5.22. I will be reading for you the various expressions of love. And as I read it, let the Spirit of God begin to walk it in your heart. This is what makes you a Christian indeed. A door was opened to me in heaven. And he said, come up hither. And when I came, it was a revelation of the Christ. Love, in its expression, 
joy go ahead you are praying peace patience many of you have lost relationships because of impatience lost great gifts god gave you because of impatience gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law go ahead and pray we are here for you come and heal the way that you heal we are here for you just pray come and change the way that you change set my heart on you come and do what you do we need a move Ghana take a minute to pray we need a move we are here for you come and change the way that you change we are here. where all attributes failed love continued and love finished no wonder he says love never fails let me introduce number two and then we wrap up for tonight god bless you what is the second dimension to knowing god is someone learning tonight mm. number two the second way we know God is by knowing his ways. The second way we know God is by knowing his ways. Psalm 25, 4 and 5. When you understand his nature and his character, the second dimension to knowing God is to understand his ways. This is what the Bible calls wisdom. It says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. In Exodus chapter 33, from verse 13, Moses prayed and said, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way. Then verse 18 he now said, show me your glory. His way will always lead to his glory. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord said, this is what the glory that shall be revealed in us. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. So the end of the believer's journey with God is glory. That your life becomes a visible manifestation of the glory of God. A living epistle. Man will learn God by seeing the excellency of himself being displayed through you. And the second attribute after the nature of God is the knowledge of his ways. This is what the Bible calls wisdom. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Is that in our Bibles? He said, get wisdom and in all your getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote you. She shall put a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her. Wisdom speaking says, by me kings reign and princes rule. By me nobles, he said, he said with me are riches, wealth and honor and durable riches. When you know the ways of God, your results become miraculous. You become a sign and a wonder to a generation when you know the ways of God. This is what the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 and verse 11. He says, it has been given unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, please look up. Let me have your attention now. The kingdom of God is a compendium of infinite possibilities. But every dimension of result in the kingdom is tied to a pattern. Please say pattern say a mystery the mysteries of the kingdom knoweth anything the bible says he knoweth nothing yet 
as he ought to know. The key expression is ought to know. There is a standard of spiritual knowledge that controls the results that we desire. Your assignment is that in learning God, you become challenged tonight that the areas of darkness in my life are a report card showing me the bankruptcy of my knowing the ways of God. That I do not know the ways of God in this area. And you become a student with humility and begin to pursue knowledge. The Bible says the kingdom of God is likened to a room where a treasure, a lost coin. Is that in your Bible? That a coin was missing. And what happened? Notice the first thing that happened in finding that coin was a candle was lit. Then a broom was used to sweep around. Every time your destiny, your dignity is lost, the first thing is light. 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 Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. That's your prayer tonight. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Can I tell you? The ability to see is a real miracle. Blind Bartimaeus did not pray and say, give me eyes. He had eyes. His prayer was that I may re to see what ordinary men do not see. There is what you can know that compels a generation to love you. People don't love you just because you are good looking or love you because... No, there is a grace. And that grace is controlled by a body of truth. Is someone learning? In addition to praying the nature of God in your life, your next prayer point is that God grant me the grace to know your ways. I'm tired of guessing my way around my Christian experience. Favor that I desire has a mystery that controls it. Speed that I desire. There was something Esther knew. Not just what she had. There was something the apostles knew. There was something the early church knew. Believers, Ghana, let's rise to a level of accurate spiritual knowledge. Where like Jesus, when we see events, we know what to do. We are not confused. When someone comes to you and says there's no favor in my life, the glory of God is not in my life, it looks like everything is tied down. You don't just blindly say let's pray and communicate ignorance in that prayer. Do you know what gives life to your prayer is knowledge. Without knowledge you pray amiss. What makes prayer powerful is the word compliancy of that prayer. If you do not pray from a standpoint of understanding, you can dissipate energy sincerely, but prayer miss. The ways of God. This is the second way we know God. So if you want to prosper in the kingdom, rather than just crying and rolling up and down, find out the pattern that has been allocated to be a blessed man. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 51, 1 and 2. It says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Understudy Abraham's life. Abraham in God's mind is his idea of what it means to be blessed. I desire encounters. Study the man Jacob. Jacob is God's portrait of a man who can meet God. And trust God to swallow up his weaknesses into strength. Leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him. The Bible says, the sun arose and he called the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. You want to study on favor. The woman Esther is God's portrait of what it means to walk in favor. A young village girl taken from Shushan 
until she became queen. Favor can take a man from anywhere to anywhere. So you study. You see, let me tell you this as I wrap up. All the names that you call in the Bible, Abraham, Peter, Esther, they are not just names of people. They are spiritual pathways that reveal how to become a certain kind of believer. So when you say Ruth, Ruth is not just the name of a woman. Ruth is a capture of a spiritual pathway that can restore people even after they've lost. She lost everything. So when you study Ruth, you are not just studying a woman. There is a road map through her life that leads you to experience God in a certain way. Are we together now? Yes. When you study Rahab, Rahab is not just a woman who did this. No, 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 no. There is a spiritual pathway called Rahab that no matter how bad things are, there is a way you can become on the Lord's side. The things that are written aforetime, they are written for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Let me tell you this. One of the ways you know it is God training you is because somewhere in your training, you will start looking like somebody in the Bible. You must look like somebody in the Bible if it is the God of heaven that is training you. You may not yet know where you are going to. This is a prophetic word for someone. The moment you begin to walk with God, eventually you will start finding parallels of your experience. If you don't find it, it's an evil spirit that is training you. Yes. Listen, there are many of you right now in your training, you are becoming Esther. All of a sudden, I came from a family of, you know, no nobility, no notoriety. But God, what is this thing you are doing with me? With the prayer every day. When I want to do what other people are doing, you seem to be separating me. What is it that you are looking for in me? It is Esther in the making. Because there is an apostolic mantle upon Esther. She's the only one who has the power to bring down her man. Not even Mordecai. Every other person in the book of Esther only played roles to assist her. The real savior was Esther. We're wrapping up. I just saw a wilderness. There needed to be a timing. It was John that would ordain Jesus. And John had to, the delay for Elizabeth was not delayed by the devil. It was to coincide with the timing. John had to be there, an adult enough, only six months older than Jesus. Can I tell you, one of the things I hopefully will be teaching you tomorrow is the value of closed doors. Before we talk of open doors, because when doors are closed, they restrict access until permission is granted. Anything new comes closed. So closed doors are not all evil. When you stand before a door, the first thing you need is discernment to know why it was closed. Because sometimes it can be a door to a prison that is closed. Make sure you don't open it. Because even the prison has a door. Teaser for tomorrow. Let's finish tonight because we have to pray. Are you seeing the reason why you should call everybody around Ghana to be here? To, if there is no space, they should sit on the fence tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ, the devil must be kicked out of this nation. This nation belongs to Jesus. There are mighty men and women of God rising, mighty politicians, businessmen, and Satan has no power over Ghana. Ghana is a prophetic child in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, there is a consecration upon Ghana. And no power of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ sustains the power to abort God's prophetic program. Please rise. Let me give you the last one as we close. So the three dimensions to knowing God. Number one, his nature and character that must become your nature and character. Number two, his ways that must become your ways. Because he already told you my ways are not your ways. But you can make his ways your ways. It's 
called alignment is called yieldedness where you give up your own way and say Lord I want to follow your way number three the third dimension of God and from this moment when I introduce it it will be the theme of our discussion up until my sessions are over Ephesians chapter 1 18 to 20 hmm. this is the third dimension of the knowledge of God Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and here's what he says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints read verse 19 if you're a Christian as loud as you can please one two go and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power watch this the third that has been granted by God to know him is to know his power you know his nature his character you know his ways then you know. 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them my apologies for keeping you waiting we're going to pray verse 6 it says the people gave heed why did they give heed to the things that Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles that he did it took more than an intelligent discussion this world you see today is tired of stories there needs to be a demonstration of the potent authentic power of the Holy Spirit power beyond the church walls power over nature power over demons power over yokes by the time someone comes who has been a victim of all kinds of orchestrations of ancestry and then one encounter at the impact conference and all of a sudden chains begin to fall all of a sudden altars are burnt on fire and the glory of that family is revealed is it not in your bible the Bible says, many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say, where is your help? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me, my glory. And he calls him the lifter up of my head. Can I tell you, I believe in the power of God. My goodness, would we have come this far without that power? The power of God is what, that is the signature that signs everything God does. We have all kinds of construction companies in Nigeria and they have their logos. You don't need to ask, are they the ones who build? Number one, you look at the excellence, then you look around and you will see their logo. Are we together? You can know what God has done because there is always a stamp of his power. There are situations that don't need character. They need power. Did you hear what I said? Causes don't need character. They need power. Character is good. It reveals Christ to men, but not to spirits. Spirits don't need character. What they need is power. Psalm 66 verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says through the greatness of thy power, not the greatness of your discussion, shall thy enemies submit themselves. In this place right now, there are destinies that have been tied down. That, that the devil will not allow you rise. The Bible is clear as to the fact that the thief cometh not. But for to steal, to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly. Can I tell you, the ministry of power is what reveals Jesus to the nations. Power. Power. Shalika parusiata. And that everything that does not name the name of Christ in this place, the planting that is not of the Lord, it must be uprooted tonight. Is someone ready to pray? Say, Father. Come on, shout it. Say, Father. Reveal your power in my life. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Your power. It takes power to do ministry. It takes power to be wealthy. It takes power to remain influential. It takes power for your head to remain afloat. Someone go ahead and pray.
Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We're still praying. Please give me, give us Romans 15. And I believe it should be verse 19. I want you to read what the Bible says there. Romans 15, verse 19. Let's read together. One to read. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. You have not fully preached the, the gospel of Christ if the power component is missing. We fully preach when power comes to. Power to heal. Power to wipe tears. Power to lift men. Power to rewrite the stories of families. There are people right now on sick beds. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. You want power in the spirit. There are three ways we access power. One, by encounters. Two, by the ministry of prayer and the word. Number three, by impartation. These are the only pathways to power. God hides his power in his word. God hides his power in men. When you are looking, are we together? Tonight, because our time is fast spent, I will have to respect the time. I've been given the honor. I'm going to pray for us and then hopefully do an altar call and then I'll take the offering. I was told to take the offering, so I'll take the offering and then we're done for tonight. But please, tomorrow I'd like you to come. If I were you, I would discipline myself to take at least an hour or two any time in the night. It's not, it's just, I've not obtained permission, but it's just a suggestion. Any time between midnight and six o'clock, discipline yourself to take, even if it's one hour, you will not die. You are on, an unserious Christian with all due respect. If you cannot use this conference and take one hour with God, flog it out with destiny. Expand your capacity that by the time you come tomorrow, you are coming testy. You are coming as an apostle, a prophet, ready to enlarge. Is that a good deal? If you need an alarm clock, put an alarm clock. Don't say the Holy Spirit will wake me. Be serious. Put an alarm clock and wake up. And in the name of Jesus, you pray. In the name of Jesus, the grace required for the next level. Now that this door is open, you are a ministry, you are a pastor, don't sleep. Wake up and pray in the night. Because we are in moments of strange impartations. Listen, let me tell you. There are mantles that have been missing in the body of Christ. But they are returning back again. These are the kinds of conferences that are bringing them back. Mantles don't go to heaven. No. Every mantle that ever came from heaven is still on earth. It's dishonor, lack of the ability to pay the price, and lack of discernment that has kept them hidden for a time in prophecy. This I know by the Spirit. I have seen it many times in my visions. That before Christ returns, this church of the Lord Jesus Christ. See Jesus lifted up. Hallelujah. My sincere apologies. Please bring for me 
three people right now that shout under the anointing three I just saw light I have to do what God is asking me to do careful breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life will you breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord breathe Lord breathe upon my life we receive we manifest his power and his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified till the nations see your power and see Jesus exalted breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life hallelujah the borer the borer the borer this is what i'm hearing in my spirit not the name of a woman a dimension in the spirit that is coming on a woman